Dear ladies and gentlemen, good day to all of you. My name is Daniel Audovic, and I'm the CEO of AV Living Lab and the member of Slovenia National Digitalization Council. I want to welcome you to our online mobility event with the title, The Spirit of Slovenian Mobility. Organized by the Spirit Slovenia, a Slovenian governmental business development agency, which is a single point of contact for the potential investors, international companies looking for new business opportunities in our country. Our today's focus will be Slovenian companies, which are among the best in the adventure mobility, data and logistics. And as you maybe already know, this year was very successful year from Slovenia. Here are some pictures of our great athletes who really deliver the excellence in the sports, combining also the mobility. And uh, as you will see in the presentations and discussions, Slovenia is also performing really well and we are a perfect ecosystem for adventure mobility, data and logistics. We are, so Slovenia is an ideal country as a lab to test new and rural mobility solution. And we are also having the, one of the highest penetration of the broadband network, but also widespread network of cycling for adventure mobility and other stuff, combining you know, sports and data. So today, Slovenia is a major hub for passenger mobility, uh, logistics, and which are important accelerators of our economy and even new mobility, adventure mobility and logistics solutions. In Slovenia, we are focusing on green technologies uh, with the creative talent of our workforce delivering the smart solution. Our today's company will present their work, their vision, their ambition, and they will share with you insights of what they do. And again, I would like to mention that now we will deliver uh, seven short keynote presentation by amazing companies, followed by panel discussion where you will be welcome to ask the question. So now I'm inviting uh, Mr. David Vukovic, the CEO of HiFly, to share his presentation with us and about his innovation in the field of adventure mobility. So David, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, thank you, Daniel, for your uh, word to me. So uh, uh, we are a startup company, HiFly. We are on the market now uh, about uh, three years, four years. We uh, are really uh, have a really high uh, growth. Uh, we are uh, each year we are bigger and bigger. Uh, so um, here you can see uh, our small production now. It's now it's even bigger. Uh, we have in the house we have everything from research, design, uh, development, and also the producing the part uh, we are uh, also a leader in the in the this uh, uh, e-fall market in the production in the small uh, parts like propellers motor system uh, also the boards uh, so uh, our passion is innovation and uh, that we are making the each day uh, the more more quality parts uh, we are uh, uh, everything uh, from uh, internet from television and also we have in the past uh, some big uh, testings uh, uh, so we are started four years back with the with the, our first uh, part um, uh, product this was uh, efoil uh, we have sold many i think we have sold more than 500 boards but uh, uh, now uh, the bigger companies uh, has uh, uh, grow our production, so we have uh, going in the production of the uh, in the assembly parts like propellers, motor system. Uh, but uh, yes, here here you can see our new product. This is uh, uh, the new product. It's uh, called uh, Flyway. 
flyway it's uh, the first electric uh, uh, full electric uh, jet ski uh, it has uh, uh, you can ride uh, almost uh, two hours and uh, charging uh, only uh, also two hours uh, like I say, it's a it's the first one of these uh, uh, flying jet ski on the market. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's fuel electric. It's uh, made no MEC, uh, no wave, so you can ride uh, on the on the on the on the almost all lakes uh, on the on the sea. Uh, so it's no you have no uh, permission that you cannot ride. Yeah, I call the flyway all call uh, the vessel of the future because it's really innovative. It's uh, powered by uh, electric motor and it's fly above the water with uh, with, uh, with wings. We call it uh, the hydro wings. It's uh, almost same like uh, airplane on the on the sky, but this is the the, the, the vessel in the the water. Um, we have made 100% uh, of uh, flyaways, so everything in the house uh, uh, from 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 uh, research, from development, from um, also the, the, the design, the, uh, the production on the CNC park, uh, everything is made with the latest uh, and the friendly material. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, the best part of the flyway is that from e-foil that it's uh, it's also from uh, for an adrenaline junkie so you can jump really high uh, you you have also the, the music the bluetooth speaker uh, so everything it's uh, included uh, you can only enjoy in the in the nature without uh, sound sound of the motor so it's a really a special feeling flying about the water. Uh, so yeah, join us and we see you on the water with uh, Flyway. Thank you, Mr. Vukovic. And when we met Thank at you. the Lake Valenia, I really <laughs> saw how easy it is to start also for somebody for whom would be the first experience because the basic foil has you know limited you have limited stability because you have nothing to hold so you need to find a balance but with this one you improve it more and bring it more to the mass market and wider audience so now we go to the next speaker mr blas stepishnik the ceo of the company hovercraft who will continue this journey on the water, but with slightly different products, which are again, very innovative, very amazing, and can contribute to lifestyle and also, you know, to adventure mobility. So Blash, please share with us your story. Hello, uh, my name is Blash Depishnik, as you told, uh, the CEO of Hovercraft. Um, we are well known as the best uh, quality manufacturer and R&D for double wall fabric. Uh, you know that fabric from SUP, Stand Up Pellboard. Uh, we offer OEM and ODM business models. Almost half of our production is actually R&D for new products. We sell our IP, uh, our know-how, and we organize the production if it's not possible in our facility elsewhere. So we are very open to any kind of cooperation. Uh, to show you what actually we do, I would like to share my screen now with my video. So uh, here you can see me working hard during the test, but usually I spend uh, my working time uh, in my production, in my office, where I only dream of those moments. I produce uh, the products which are in, uh, in my uh, family uh, situation. Um, and those moments bring me experiences that I invent products which I like, and I hope you like them too. Uh, so what I can offer to you um, are innovations in inflatable products, as you see, made of drop stitch, and um, uh, our well-known products are inflatables for super yacht, or not just for catamarans. Now we see the super yacht platform. Um, we made the most of them, um, the, the best quality in the world. 
uh, our customers, of course, are wealthy and rich and the market is full. So this is not the product I would like to sell to you. Actually, I would like to find partners with uh, sales net, with production, production capacity or capital for both. That would bring our products faster to the market, which was the question for Roundtable. Uh, of course, uh, some products are already prepared for mass production. And now you see Jetboat in combination with Jetski, but this is also the product which already exists in the uh, general market. Um, when the next chapter of our products which are available for uh, mass production are electric boats. This one is electric ferry boat. Even though it was not made as a speedboat, you can see it reached high speed with very small engine. This is very important to understand that uh, small motors, small battery are light and uh, they, uh, this situation with heavy battery and heavy motor was cut by this ultralight um, electric at 450. This is one of three models. Um, actually, this boat is so light in case of sun and solar panels, you don't need to charge it in electric grid at all. Uh, with this boat, uh, we, we, we cut this never ending, where's the charger uh, story? Um, and uh, how wide can this um, model can be um, used in just European market? Only Berlin has 4,000 kilometers of water roads. So we can imagine the water area on the whole world, which this boat is capable of for. This one is a little bigger, big six. It's six meter long, but much, much bigger than previous. Um, this is my trip in Croatia. We spent 14 days on the uh, seaside. Uh, it's very funny. Uh, it's um, family fun boat in general. Uh, it offers 12 meter of space on the base floor and eight, eight square meters of the roof. Kids love it. Um, also, there is so much uh, shadow uh, sh that uh, you're always uh, comfortable and uh, never burned. Uh, as I described in an article in Nautic magazine, Val Nautica, the big six means freedom, entertainment, a lot of space and comfort. It's a quiet ecological watercraft of new generation for solar sailing. Families will enjoy it, uh, those who love, love water, but have no interest in comp competition. Just being together and being close to natural environment. This is very important uh, fact, uh, which is uh, the base rule for, uh, I hope, most of the families. The next one you see is electric at 830. It is more tourist way how to do um, a solar electric boat business. It uh, capable of 20 people uh, loading 20 people or 2000 kilograms in case you need to um, load uh, some uh, a car also. Um, this is the, the next model, which is um, already in use in nearby lake in uh, Trabolsko Ezero. Uh, it's uh, outboard is 11 kilowatt and it can reach more than 10 knots. It's enough to do some water skiing. Um, and it also bring uh, very uh, uh, solar, uh, you don't need to charge it at all. Uh, the solar panels are enough to, to bring all the electricity you need, only in case of bad weather, then you need to charge it. But from normal charger, you don't need supercharger. This is very important because most of the lakes and rivers don't have those. Huh. What else uh, can I show you? Maybe just to prove how uh, multifunctional uh, th th those fabric is, double wall fabric is inflatable fabric, uh, which uh, is kind of a brick, which you can build anything. What you see now is a 50 meter pool. Um, it is uh, 1,700 cubic meter of water inside, the two times Olympic pool. Um, but this is not just a pool. If you think wider, it's uh, also a freshwater tank uh, for petrol, for 
maybe fish to grow up fish. Uh, so um, we have know how uh, how to do it in any size, height, how deep. And if this is not enough, I I can show you a helipad. Uh, it is quite small, just 200 kilograms in weight. But when inflated, it offers five ton capacity. This helicopter has only one ton, uh, but uh, it's also uh, possible to land on any kind of surface, mud, uh, permafrost, and so on. And it, of course, you can uh, also become a certified helipad uh, for super yacht, rescue military, and other purpose. Uh, so we can produce anything. We have many ideas, uh, projects which are ready to bring on the market. And if you see yourself in this uh, idea, please let me know. Thank you for this, Mr. Stepishnik. So as you saw, uh, we have flying jet ski. We have in basically the surfaces that we can build any kind of structures. So now we are going from adventure mobility more to data, to uh, traffic optimization, to logistics. So the next speaker is Ms. Ursha Hribernik, the head of mobility at Lead Transit. And she will share with us uh, her presentation. So how they are managing uh, the growing number of, you know, the vehicles, things in the mega cities. So Ursha, please share with us your presentation. Thank you, Daniel. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ursha Hribernik. I'm the head of mobility at LAT Transit. Um, LAT Transit is a global um, <clears throat> smart mobility solutions provider to public transit agencies and operators. So today I will talk um, about how we manage one of the largest e-bus fleets in the world. So, um, so far, we managed to help more than 110 transit companies with our innovative solutions. Um, LAT's um, <clears throat> systems run on more than 30,000 connected vehicles, um, and our solutions actually support more than 5 billion passenger trips annually. So, as you can see below, we have a very global presence. Um, from Asia, uh, Australia, uh, a lot of ongoing projects in the Middle East currently, um, Europe, Africa, and also Latin America. So we are a proud members also of uh, the UITP and it 4 pt um, <clears throat> So I will uh, tell you more about our project. Uh, I cannot disclose the customer, but the project is about um, optimization of on-demand and scheduled bus services for um, term tournament transportation. So there will be a very big uh, event in this city um, and the authorities there uh, want to uh, actually uh, want that their like uh, transport operations run um, and services run smoothly and efficiently. So during the event, there will be 20% of scheduled fixed routes and 80% of on-demand fixed routes. Um, of course, after the, the, the event, they want to also utilize this, um, the fleet that they bought, um, and we will help them transition um, the transportation into a public transportation service. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I mentioned that this is one of the largest e-bus fleets in the world. Um, <clears throat> there, there have been like more than 850 electric vehicles, electric buses deployed in this city. Um, so, and apart from that, also 70%, uh, I mean, 70% uh, are diesel and 30% electric. Altogether, more than 2,800 buses. We equipped all of them with onboard, uh, very powerful onboard units. Um, our partner ABB um, deployed uh, 580 EV charger <clears throat> charging stations 
and also our partner company Papercast um, deployed or is deploying actually um, 2000, uh, 2700 um, e-paper bus stop displays. Um, so I can imagine you are not all from the public transit area, so I'll just briefly introduce you how the roles are organized uh, within a, a public transport authority, who is usually our customer. So public transport author authority uh, wants to make their passengers happy. So um, they want to smoothly, uh, they want to provide a smooth service that will take a passenger from A to B in a short time and also don't uh, let them wait on a bus stop too long uh, so that they will keep continuing uh, using um, the service, the public transit service. Um, and then we have uh, several departments inside the, uh, the transport company. So we have uh, Ahmed who is leading the operations and who's, who, who, take care, who takes care that um, the service is reliable and frequent. And we have Mohammed who is head of maintenance and who takes care that the buses are uh, all time reliable and faultless. Um, and in case of electric vehicles, there is also a very big factor, the energy consumption that depends on several conditions. So we have weather conditions. So the, the battery range varies whether it's cold or hot, then depend, it depends on the driving style of the driver, um, depends on how um, full is the bus, also which route do you take depending on the inclination and so on. Of course, how close is also the, the nearest charging uh, station and also the traffic conditions. And then in this case, let's say the same bus can do th around 300 kilometers one day. And then the next day, the same bus does only 200 kilometers. And there is a huge, um, let's say change or unpredictable range that actually <clears throat> Ahmed and Mohammed want to kind of um, control and uh, to, to better plan their service, to utilize their, um, their resources, uh, so their buses more, um, more efficiently. And they do it by using our robust technologies to optimize elect electric fleet operations with battery management, charging station monitoring, uh, telematics, vehicle maintenance, vehicle operations data. Um, so here you can see all the charging stations in real time on the map. So we give like uh, all informations about the, the char charging stations availability to Ahmed so that the, he knows in every moment uh, where to send the empty buses or the, the buses that have like low battery. Um, then we also provide all the telematics data and uh, so the, the health uh, data of, of the bus. Uh, here are just some parameters. Um, so that also um, Mohammed has uh, full control uh, over the maintenance and knows how to plan uh, maintenance accordingly. Um, all our solutions are fully open and very flexible and modular. So they can be easily integrated with either charging uh, system platform, vehicle planning, scheduling and dispatch, or other legacy systems such as SIP, for example. And also the geolocation data can be um, further processed uh, with our highly accurate journey prediction uh, engine that gives very reliable and accurate uh, ETA uh, outputs. So um, this um, LIT predict, uh, the journey prediction engine has been, uh, is a very proven technology and has been deployed uh, for several years in the countries with the best tra uh, public transport in the world. Um, the outputs from it um, can be easily disseminated to um, passenger information systems, 
be it bus stops, interchange, on board, uh, or also mobile and web. And, and also one of the passenger information displays uh, is um, e-paper technology. Um, it is solar powered. Uh, the content on it is invariate um, against any uh, sunlight conditions, very resistant against vandalism and comes also with the super friendly uh, content management system. Um, so with full stack of our solutions and partner solutions, Ahmed and Mohammed can make um, journeys reliable and on time for their passengers. So thank you for your attention. Um, we are open for new, opportun new opportunities, partnerships or col collaboration. So feel free to reach out uh, to us anytime. So either via email or LinkedIn or yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hribernik. It's amazing to see Slovenian company managing, you know, the traffic in cities like Hong Kong and Singapore and other mega cities. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our panel discussion later on. So now I will give the word to Mr. Rokienko, the CEO of Monolith Company, uh, to share our, uh, to share basically his uh, vision of, you know, route optimization, how we can benefit from the data and the AI who is coming. Thank you, Daniel. Hello, hello everybody. Now I will present you a story about two family companies Monolith and Slovenia and our last worldwide product, Fleet Opti. Julia, please start with film and presentation uh, and I will speak. <laughs> so Monolith and Slovenia combine long time experts and enthusiasts from the fields of geodetic fleet management, information, stu information studies and management with the common goal to become the best in the field of location-based services. We try to combine a professional management team with a strong technical and the de development team that together follows the modern trends of information and communication technology. We combine a broad spectrum of knowledge in effective project with the goal to provide solution of the highest quality. Besides that, we are an established name and well known in the UR market and fleet management and on of fleet management and telematics. Our solutions are based on dynamic and static spatial data that are crucial for any kind of fleet management, geographic information system, and navigation map. Our traffic, our traffic platform with floating car data is an important part of future mobility and logistics. Nowadays, because of globalization, logistics represent one of the biggest parts of international business. Through understanding our, understanding our customers and struggles they are dealing with within any kind of transport, we discovered that fleet and transport and optimization has a lot of potential. With the, that in mind, we developed an optimization tool called Fleet Opti. So Fleet Opti is a solution that enables easier and faster distribution plan, plan re realization. With the platform use, usage, we gain optimal transport, which leads to saving and decreased in product productivity of the company. It is suitable for all kinds of companies that are dealing with distribution. The tool enables the creation of individual timetables or simulate different situation and combination of transport routes, export plan to the user program for vehicle monitoring or send it to the driver directly into the vehicle. The main functionality of this one of a kind and easy to use solution are easier and faster implementation of distribution plan, help a daily planning of distribution channel with high frequency of orders, economical and practical solution for transport, importing customer with one click based on the standardized file in the currently most widely used exchange format, CSV, integration with our users program for vehicle monitoring, comparison of the planned transport with the realized one, and route analyzed cost comparison between manual execution and software optimization with fleet opt. 
Experience shows that main benefits of using this tool are 14% shorter delivery times, 22% shorter distance made, 12% less equipment needed, 50% more evenly distributed labor force, and 70% reduced human error factor. If we transcript these savings, we can say without doubt that this tool has the capacity to make a big impact on any company currently fixed cost within the distribution. As I said before, the fleet opt is suitable for any kind of company dealing with distribution. And with this, we really mean any kind. We were able to hide the complex complexity of the software into a user-friendly tool suitable to sm smaller company without any logistic department, which were during the epidemic of COVID forced to adjust their sales and go online with delivery and also for bigger companies that would like to additionally optimize their fleet. With constant looking for a bigger picture of uh, our story doesn't conclude here. As a development company, we are striving to look forward in the future, follow the more modern technology trends, and I'm sure that you came to the same point to agree that the need of the dynamic and spatial data with, within the autonomous mobility is inventable. Nowadays, the vehicles are ready for autonomous driving. They just need the digital infrastructure. The use of the fleet opti solution and dynamic spatial data will help us to make exact prediction, and this will lead to less vehicle on the road, fewer traffic jams, indirectly smaller carbon footprint, and important impact the field of logistic, autonomous mobile, mobility, and everyday life in the future. And this is from me, uh, the end of the story. <laughs> so I thank hope you. It's yes, interesting for you. Thank you, Mr. Yasenko. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Of course, stay with us because in the panel discussion, we will explore more about your work and okay. about the products and how you will contribute to sustainable mobility in the future. So the next speaker is Mr. Luca Bradesco, the CEO of the company Solves All. Uh, and he will share his uh, view on how artificial intelligence and data can help us live lives easier in mobility space. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Luca Bradesco, founder and CEO of um, Solzol, a high-tech company from Ljubljana, but we are working with uh, multiple companies from EU and uh, US. Today I'm going to present oh, sorry, um, one of our products. So we have multiple of them, but I'll focus on the Adria Mobile AI Communications Hardware, or short MAG, which is a product for mobile houses, mobile homes, and caravans. Uh, it's easy to get an idea what it does. It's easier to show the uh, movie with, which describes all the pictures. So first I'll show that and then describe a little bit more about the uh, functionalities and the uh, hardware and uh, software behind.
So as you saw in the video, we developed a full, uh, full software and hardware package to um, control and maintain all the aspects of uh, your recreational vehicle life. And uh, this is, to be able to do that, we had to develop our own hardware, which connects everything in the vehicle from lights, other appliances, heating, air conditioning, um, variety of sensors and actuators. And it provides the internet connectivity. Then we developed the mobile apps for um, user interface. So users can actually um, connect and um, like uh, uh, the apps act as an interface to the vehicle. And we developed as well the uh, full cloud support, which allows the remote control and additional services on top of that, uh, such as, for example, remote maintenance or automatic vacation planning um, with some uh, AI algorithms and so on. So in our core, we are AI company. This is just uh, one application of our expertise um, that, that we are doing. On the user interface, the app is separated into multiple levels of the screens. So we have points of interest, leveling, vehicle data, and so on. And then the main screen, which shows the general overview, then you can go into the more detailed category uh, overview about the energy, for example, and then you can go into, into uh, all the details about a specific sensor, for example, a battery, where you can see all the history, also the predictions of the future usage based on your past usage and, and so on. Uh, as mentioned before, this is a few examples of the uh, detailed uh, sensors, for example, battery, CO2, um, heating gas consumption, or how was the electricity, how was the energy source set up for the heating. Um, and that would be all from my side. So as mentioned before, we, uh, we have multiple products. Uh, we are coming from the AI and machine learning expertise, and we are applying it into a real world and mobility, logistics, and so on. Uh, and this is one example of the of what we did. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bradeshko. Uh, so the next speaker is Mr. Tomas Leva uh, from the founder and the managing director of the Trace Labs so Origin Trail company, who will share with us uh, his approach in uh, helping to move things around better, smarter, and more efficient. Hi everyone, thanks for having me and thanks for all the great presentations. It's been uh, a lot of fun listening to you. Um, and thanks to Yulia for sharing my presentation. Yeah, as the title suggests, we'll be kind of having a little bit of a deep dive into what is a more uh, technical topic in a way, uh, but we'll be not only speaking about technology and about kind of what's the new uh, internet infrastructure and how can we leverage it for, for the logistics um, and as well as mobility uh, use cases, but um, also about societal things and how really, what does it mean? What is the intersection uh, of how we think about trust, how we think about data, how we think about systems and how can something like a decentralized knowledge graph really make an impact and, and start changing the things for the better. Um, all right, so here's a little bit about us. Um, the, the founder and the management boards, as well as uh, an interesting points around the advisory board, obviously, uh, the, the name that uh, stands out is, is Bob Metcalf, uh, which is another important point that I wanted to make before really uh, jumping into it. Uh, since Bob has uh, probably know him as, as, the, as the father of the, uh, the law of network effects, as well as the internet pioneer who literally founded the ethernet and, and developed the first uh, networks that grew what is internet today. But the important point about that is that um, he uh, also brings a lot of knowledge about how to create network effects and drive them. And when we're talking about these type of um, topics like origin trail and, and um, building out the internet's infrastructure, these things are very important because if we don't achieve them, then the uh, likelihood of success uh, is much, much lower. Um, all right, so jumping into, um, into what we do. Uh, so our focus is really on organizing humanity's most important um, assets, uh, making them three things. So discoverable, uh, so things can be found, verifiable, uh, you know what uh, something is truthful and uh, has been, um, it can be validated and valuable. Um, and we were talking about assets. Um, we really talk about, we, we, we look at it from, from a very holistic point of view. Uh, so it can be things like supply chain assets uh, in logistics. It could also be things like art, diplomas, 
It could also be digital assets. Uh, so we start we start to move data to assets. Uh, if you're thinking about the just the enormous amount of uh, data that currently is somehow dormant, or you know each of the companies that even spoke today here are generating a lot of it uh, for internal use. Here we're really talking about how do we make this in a form of an asset that can be discoverable, uh, that can be verifiable, and it can also be made uh, valuable. Um, and it's really transitioning the um, the internet as such from the Kind of like what we consider web 2 which is um, a lot of data silos a lot of um, connections which are more maybe one-to-one -one, um, but not on, on the data level not as present um, and moving that towards the vision of a semantic web 3 um, as, as um, the decentralized knowledge graph unlocks it um, a quick overview of where we kind of lie uh, in the uh, in this the new infrastructure of uh, of the internet that is being built out. Uh, so the decentralized knowledge graph is not a blockchain, even though that's a very common misconception. Uh, but it is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, de decentralized network uh, that is providing that semantic layer. Um, and we'll be looking um, why semantic layer is an important piece and how does it really tackle the business challenges of, of today and future, um, as well as what's the important point uh, of utilizing blockchain, what it, what it delivers. Um, starting with the, uh, the blockchain, so from the backside, uh, blockchains are basically trust networks. And the way we are approaching it is something that's, a, it, it, these are networks. And as you've seen on the slide before, uh, here, here below, it's that we've integrated with quite a few of them. So Ethereum is LiveX, and Polygon. And we're also um, integrating Polkadot hopefully very soon. Um, and by, but why why would we um, indulge in integrating with multiple blockchains? Is because you have that trust um, delivered uh, to the to the data that you're looking at. So you have something that's tamper proof. Uh, you can leverage it for things like identity. It, and then it also unlocks a lot of the interesting stuff that you can do uh, in with new concepts like DeFi and asset tokenization, which maybe today uh, we'll leave a little bit to the side. And on the other hand, the other part of decentralized knowledge graph word is the knowledge graph and knowledge graph, why are they important? So you have these semantic networks. Um, the, 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 maybe the easiest way to think about it is uh, of how the kind of the larger companies in the world, they have leveraged them like Google, Facebook, and Amazon. So Google uses these very powerful data structures to map out the world wide web. Facebook would use it to do the same with users, Amazon with products. So whenever there you have a lot of connections and you have uh, a need to understand data, not just to uh, not just to kind of uh, keep it in a uh, in a data lake or dump it somewhere, uh, then a semantic approach makes uh, makes a lot of uh, makes a lot of sense. And decentralized knowledge graph basically combines the two concepts together. So you have a knowledge graph and you have it based uh, on a decentralized network, thus having the the element of trust as well as the element of, of a semantic network. Um, and when we're looking at it like that, I think we, we kind of hopefully have an, uh, a, a, a somewhat of an understanding of what it can deliver in terms of a uh, in terms of uh, in internet infrastructure and where it lies. So it's a, it's a middleware that, that is able to connect things together very nicely. And for the supply chain purposes, three things come out of that that are very uh, very important. One is you can have a lot of interoperability. So it's very uh, useful to tie things together. So when you're looking at, uh, for example, the in, in the case of logistics, like a rail travel travel uh, uh, or rail, or rail industry, um, in order to be able to have a very good connections among multiple systems uh, in the supply chain of a, of, a, of a rail industry provider, that like in this case, the Swiss Federal Railways, um, there's multiple systems involved in having something that's an interoperability layer Helps a lot by allowing you to um, allowing you to connect to different systems and to your suppliers, and so that they don't have to change their legacy systems because obviously you don't want to incur a lot of costs. Uh, so inter interoperability is a huge driver for for the supply chain use cases and for logistics and, and mobility. And then the other point that you can get out of it is interconnectivity. So it's not just about the fact that uh, you're able to kind of uh, have an, um, you know, a, a connection between two systems and for them to talk about it, but you're also creating connections that can allow further discoveries of, of data uh, within multiple systems. So that's kind of fun because if you start to build out different industry-wide consortia type of networks, uh, you're able to query a much larger, uh, or you can search for, for certain assets in a much larger setting that you would normally do. Um, so again, in, in case of maybe rail or pharma, you, you're, you're able to, figure out you know, all throughout all your suppliers and maybe even partners in, in your network uh, to learn more about a certain, uh, a certain asset that you're looking at. And then the third one is obviously integrity because uh, let's say in the case of a trusted factory where 
over 40% of US importers are utilizing Origin Trail to exchange audit report data for over 22,000 factories uh, in, in the Asian market. Uh, what you, what's, the, what's the very important thing is when you're looking at this type of audit report data and making your decisions uh, based on it, that you know that uh, who issued it, so you have that identity that it hasn't been changed, it hasn't been tampered with, and that you have a very precise way of uh, managing data access because uh, at the end of the day when uh, you have, you know, even today, if we look at logistics, I mean, the, the supply chains broke down on, on, the, on the import procedures of uh, different ports worldwide, um, and a lot of the things that kind of also trusted factory addresses is how to uh, enable a more smooth uh, import procedures in, you know, in the US in this case, but as well in the UK um, uh, that, that we're also um, engaged with. And this type of very precise data sharing is important because it's not only you're sharing something with your partners that might uh, you know, you feel comfortable about it, but also it's something that you might be sharing with uh, the government uh, agencies, uh, where again, it's important for the government agency to know that this data that ha has been submitted is really something that has the integrity and veracity. Um, so yeah, pharmaceutical, again, I maybe it, it's, it's another logistics, can, you, you can observe it from the perception of logistics as well and the, uh, and the, and the supply chain, uh, because it's, uh, it's very important to have that chain of custody Obviously, you don't want to take a drug that uh, came from somewhere you don't know or has been introduced by, by a third party that's not really a part of the secure uh, pharmaceutical supply chain that it should be. And a lot of times these things do happen because uh, there's a lot of uh, gray market um, incentive uh, because of the just the high value of, um, of the products that are being uh, shifted around. So in this case, you, you have a much better protection against counterfeits, uh, counterfeits as well as greater visibility as to where the products finally uh, arrive at. Food and beverage, I think that's the most on the on the nose example. So I think that uh, you know, making sure that you know where something came from when you eat it, again, a very very uh, important uh, thing, and uh, something that Origin Trail uh, enables as a component of the new architecture of, of the internet. Uh, all right, what can you do? I think that one's a little bit more technical, so I will uh, will glance over it. I'm, I'm hoping I achieved the uh, the goal with this presentation to. Uh, give you a little bit of the glimpse into what Origin Trail is and how uh, where it lies in the in the infrastructure of the of the future technologies uh, stack that we'll be uh, will be utilizing uh, largely, as well as giving you a little bit of uh, ideas and then spur some inspiration uh, of how this type of um, technology can be utilized in your businesses uh, as well. So thank you very much for for the time you've uh, given me. And if I have any left on my hands, I yield it back. Uh, yield it back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tomas. Of course, in the panel, there will be a chance for our audience to ask you the question because the blockchain is very exciting emerging technology that is very mature. It's uh, well spread already, but still, I think there is a lot of room for further adoption of the blockchain technologies around the world. And Slovenia is taking the lead here, which is also worth mentioning. So the next speaker is Mr. Igor Kuchevar coming from the company ZZI. So he will talk about end-to-end -end electronic monitoring package delivery. And basically, uh, Igor, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Igor, as announced. Today, I'll try to do my best to present Logchain, a comp comprehensive platform po for coordinated digital collaboration. Uh, a little bit about our company, uh, ZZI was founded in 89 with developing the customs administration system for the government. We are a software development company, uh, basically uh, torn on two, on two sides. One side is uh, developing projects and uh, software solutions for the government, and the other is cloud microservices uh, under the brand BizBox. One of the services under the brand BizBox is also Logchain, which I will present today. Also, we, if you want to do a safe business in electronic world, you need a certified electronic archive for your documents to be stored safely and, of course, reachable at all time. Uh, also, a platform for B2B processes and supported standards is also one of the solutions of the BizBox. Uh, the main uh, uh, perspective in our business is that we work with partners. That's why we have more than 46 integrations of our services into the different ERP, DMS, WMS, DMS systems. So we support the ongoing processes and ongoing business with our solutions. 
in Slovenia, we have uh, one of the biggest uh, EDI networks with more than 17,000 companies connected at the time of speaking. So if we look at the logistics as such, uh, the research shows that more than 46% of CEOs and business owners invest into end-to-end -end visibility. So that's quite an issue today. And if you want to achieve that, of course, we need to work together. So it's not about our company, uh, all about our company anymore, but we need to connect with different companies, even different uh, uh, states, uh, uh, governments, and different processes. And if you want to do that, we, at one hand, we need to be prepared to connect, prepared to share data. And on the other, we need a, a central connecting point through which we can all connect and share the data uh, seamlessly and, of course, on a safe way. We've seen a lot of uh, nice presentations today and also solutions that are offered on the market. And if we want to use all that power that these solutions are providing, we need to find a way to share this data into the wider spread and, of course, uh, include as much entities as possible into the ecosystem that will provide results that we want to achieve on our path. Uh, of course, uh, in the process, we want to support all various uh, ways of working. We know that each company has its own way of work and that's why it, it is successful because it works on that way. And we offer the solution that provides the integrity of a company, but can still connect with different kinds of uh, processes. It, it, we can look at it in a way of speaking different languages. We speak uh, English, somebody speaks Chinese, somebody speaks Slovene and German, and the platform as a central entity can translate all these languages so we can all speak our, uh, our own language, but everybody else can understand us. Blockchain is a logistics network that offers different layers, as you can see here in the middle, so it's open and formal communication between partners. So it means that you can connect with uh, any entity you want by your terms and share the data with anybody you want. Processes are standardized and can be tailor-made, of course, by your, uh, by your preferences. We have many different interfaces that offer different types of connect connectivity. And uh, of course, everything sits on top of certified electronic archive. That, that means that every, everything that happens in the digital world is safely stored and available for your use afterwards. So it, we offer uh, extensive analytics and reporting. And one uh, main issue that I want to uh, stress out is that is easy to start. Today, implementation uh, days or implementation phases are getting longer and longer because processes are more and more complex. And if you need uh, to implement one system, uh, for example, six months or one year, and then you have three or four uh, apps that you need to uh, integrate, that takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, and it's not practical anymore because we need to be agile in this in this way. And uh, platform offers easy to start uh, solution that can connect you to, to all businesses without your effort. So we do the work that usually IT departments should do, but are not able to because they need to take care of their own processes. Blockchain is uh, somehow uh, connected to different to different solutions, and that's the power of blockchain. So we've seen a nice presentation of Fleet Opti. Fleet Opti is also uh, integrated uh, in the into logistics platform of blockchain. So you can work through the platform platform with the Fleet Opti uh, solution and get the results you want, and then interconnect this to the other uh, side. Maybe on the right side, if we see, is a company Spitza made a, a mobile mobile app that uh, that uh, drivers use to go on the field to to report what's going on to uh, deliver electronic proof of delivery so we have the, that flexibility that you can connect different system into one and work maybe through one system and don't have four or five or uh, six different interfaces that you need to operate with so what's the base uh, of the cloud platform. So we support process from order to delivery. Even now, uh, we will add on 
order to pay. So you will get the electronic document into the app or onto the computer. You will just say, okay, I approve and payment goes forward. So you have automated process from order to, to payment and you have much less downtime. Formal relationship between partner, partners is set up among, uh, bit, uh, through the platform. You can manage and track all the shipments, drivers, vehicles, and supported documents that go along on the, on the field. So we can say that blockchain is some kind of extended digital hand that goes onto the field and brings you digital data back into your back office so you can work with the, with the, with the uh, data faster and more uh, efficient. Platform allows all different alerts and reminders uh, so your customers and receiving parties can be well informed and will not call or send emails into your office. So that's one of the key elements of the supply chain today is that you provide also the information for your clients. Uh, also advanced tools are uh, into the uh, incorporated into the platform. You, you have uh, planning, insight into shipments, uh, signed, doc signed documents, package, uh, package uh, uh, shipments and package packages uh, to, for returnable, returnable package. And also the, the great advantage is that you eliminate paper in delivery. So what do you get? You get control and management from the comfort of your own office. By simply looking to, uh, onto the picture, what's going on on the field, and clicking maybe on one of these green trucks or the yellow ones, you can immediately get the data, live real-time data from the field, and you can act accordingly to what's going on. Of course, give instructions to the drivers, uh, different, different uh, routes, and much more. So you get vehicle locations, shipment statuses, and today uh, a, a big fuss is around electronic proof of delivery and of course electronic documents. Uh, and it's much uh, easier to say that you can do it than to really do it and be compliant with all the regulatories and law, law that is set up in the supply chain. So with usage of some kind, such kind of a platform as blockchain, you have all that covered. So that means that you can uh, focus on your business and not uh, all the other things that uh, are needed that you work outside of your organization. Interesting is also that uh, we can offer all the data to third parties. That means that if you run an operation and want to share uh, a status or, or document or uh, the or delivery time or whatever is happening, you can share it easily through the platform. Customer or receiving party just types in the document or their ID number and they can immediately see what's going on with their shipments. Uh -huh, okay, it's been loaded. It approximate delivery time is 12 o'clock. So I can accordingly uh, start the managing maybe employees if the bigger load is coming into the shipment. So that's a brief overview of a blockchain platform that can easily cover end-to-end -end package visibility and traceability. And also on top of that, you have the electronic data interchange network. So that means that you can uh, extend your electronic business also on the field where before that was not possible or was very hard to do so. So that would be uh, in short from my side uh, at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Igor, for your insightful presentation uh, in, uh, about your work. So now we completed, uh, you know, the keynote presentation of se seven amazing companies, very innovative, very data driven. And now it's the time for your audience also to ask the question. Uh, and I'm inviting all the panelists uh, to switch on the camera and uh, to join me in the roundtable discussion. And let me ask uh, and raise the first questions to, to basically David. So David, uh, I saw your product. It's simply something that everybody will immediately like. Uh, I re still remember that it takes 20 minutes uh, to master it, which is super great. Uh, but the question now is, 
how what are your the next steps for your company so how to bring it to the global scale yes uh, i have learned about uh, the, the, the the running the production and everything in the past three years we are, we are doing the best we are growing in past three years uh, i think we cannot grow any uh, uh, any faster because we have buy new landscape for the new facility we have uh, brand new now uh, eight uh, cnc machines we have uh, employee from zero in the in the eight uh, yeah, everything together so we we must growing step by step because i cannot uh, burn out uh, we cannot burn out to growing too fast and uh, i think we we must uh, growing uh, rapidly year to year and uh, and the production it's must must going to bigger and i think this is the the the, the healthy growth mm. for, for our company Yes, it's always good if you are able to grow organically and, and healthy. Yeah. Uh, so the next uh, question is for Blush. So Blush, you also have a variety of products. We saw uh, during on your video presentation a, a couple of them. I think you have in your mind a couple of more of them. But similar question to you, you know, how to bring this to the market from a country like Slovenia and to bring it to the global scale because for sure you are solving many problems uh, around the globe. Yes, um, in general, we, we brought some products, only some products of all possible to the market. And it's always the way that we find a partner who is who already have a sales net or a credit to do this. Um, maybe this is um, already existing company with um, similar products and uh, it would just bring our product to the, the rest. And this is the shortest way. Uh, the other way around is to, to start a company and have uh, funds to do the presentation on fairs. Uh, but we all know that this uh, takes some time and quite a lot of money. So uh, yes, the shortest way is to, to do this uh, directly with the company who have uh, roots in this market. Uh, but we need to know that um, production capacity should rise. And this is uh, why we think about, or we already done this before, we, we, um, we, we uh, find a manufacturer which, who is already capable to do this. And we learn this manufacturer how to do this, uh, how to make good products. Not, maybe not the same quality as here in Slovenia, but still much better than um, in other productions over the world. Yes, uh, it's it's the true. So both of you are innovators, but manufacturing is about processes, automatization. It is about you know robotics. It is about dealing with supply chain and all this stuff. And partnering with such uh, great companies would be a benefit and faster scale up for both of you. So now we go basically to data driven companies. So Ursha. So I'm really impressed to see how, you know, Slovenian company is capable of, you know, managing the data in mega cities, working with public transport authorities and to deal with billions and billions of information. And uh, so the question is, of course, what is the secret formula and what kind of partnerships are you looking for? So who, you know, which mega cities you can approach next? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so unlike other most of the companies, actually, we didn't start at home, but we rather started in the cities with the best public transit in the world. So Singapore and Hong Kong. Uh, we were very fortunate, but also um, there is like a lot of knowledge, um, experience, uh, and of course, enthusiasm um, in the company. Um, so I think this this was like the main factor that contributed to this great success. Um, then second thing is, of course, we have very close relations with our customers and uh, partners. Uh, very agile uh, approach um, towards projects, and also, of course, our technology. Um, we compared to the competition, we have. Um, 
very open systems that are very modular and flexible in design. Um, and this is what our customers like as well. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, we have a huge global presence already, but still like um, we put a lot of effort into new partnerships and um, um, and um, let's say bringing new opportunities on board. Um, so would be happy uh, if we can also uh, let's say um, take advantage of this event and um, uh, gain a new customers. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Osha. So I will go back to Blush because we got also one question for the audience and basically it is related to, you know, COVID-19 pandemic. So what's for your company this, an opportunity or a challenge? And from both perspectives, from the employer perspective, but also from the product line, assuming that people were looking for, you know, spending quality time isolated somewhere far away from everybody. Uh, and uh, I would like to hear your thoughts on how the COVID impacted your business. Yeah, uh, COVID infected, uh, infected us in both waves. Uh, first, we stopped our production. Uh, we, we were closed for eight months, but then in the beginning of this year, everything exploded. Uh, market just uh, get hungry and uh, we have now problem with uh, how to hire good employees because market is less and less. And um, this is the biggest challenge now in Slovenia. Uh, there are no good workers in the market. So our capacity is not growing as much as I would like to, but uh, yeah, we will solve it somehow in the future, but I don't know about the price. The price is going up. Also materials, also the labor, so in what, how COVID affects us in the moment, we have too many orders, but not enough capacity and not enough fabric to do it. To do it. Uh, so we are affected in both directions. So this is the right opportunity to partner with you then. <clears throat> so thank you for your thoughts. So we go uh, to the Rook. Uh, Rook. So basically, you know, there is a big discussion about sustainable mobility. We know that UNESCO released the sustainability development goals and transportation is a big contributor to a global warming challenge. So uh, listening to your presentation, uh, and I saw that there are many things and companies are looking for uh, sustainable solutions. They are thinking how to achieve zero emissions society or a company we even have in Slovenia more than 15 companies committed that they will be by 2030 completely zero emission companies and it's growing, the number is growing rapidly. So could you explain how the Fleet Opti is contributing to achieve these goals and how companies around the world can implement to achieve these goals faster? Uh, like I said in my presentation, uh, companies will make less kilometer for the same or even better service uh, within distribution, of course. I think that I said 20, 22%. And on the other side, they will use less materials, of course, uh, uh, less uh, human uh, resources, which will lead to reducing commission by, I think that on the, on the our side, by more than 40%. So we, we will still working on spatial data, on, on uh, floating car data, on uh, dynamical data. And uh, with all this data and our product, we hope that uh, we, will, we will go in the right direction <laughs> to, to, to become uh, zero uh, in, 20, in 2040, like you say. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rob. So, uh, Luca, when I listen to your presentation about, you know, the moving homes, you know, I always uh, immediately I said, what about uh, the homes, the static homes, you know, uh, the, basically the real estate market. So can be your solution also implemented elsewhere beyond mobility? Can it be implemented like, you know, smart houses or maybe to mobility like smart cars? Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes. We already have some prototypes in the in both fields, um, but yeah, in both fields, it's somehow we we are searching for a partner to to actually go to the market. So to 
to come from prototypes to to the products it's a somehow long way and as a small startup it's uh, pretty hard to compete for example in smart houses with uh, google home alexa and like all the market is pretty quite overcrowded already so um, and th that's our status basically we have plans we have working prototypes and we are using it for our own like personal homes and so on but um, for going to market we are still in search for a good partner um, and the strategy yes and you are also active in horizon calls european research calls so some companies can invite you uh to jointly submit the proposal and explore more you know how technologies can be implemented uh, the license. yeah that's a really good idea and we are actively now writing two proposals and we as a company we are basically a spin-off from major stefan institute uh, biggest research institution in slovenia so we have very good contacts there and we are also like get invitations from them and we are also able to build a little bit bigger um consortium uh, if um, something like that happens so we have yeah this this is actually a good idea and we are also looking into that but a little bit with the left hand because we are focusing more on the business side um, but yes that's that's a good opportunity we should all take and i'm inviting um, anyway everybody here to contact us yes so like artificial intelligence is is the future also the blockchain technology is the future and with us is Tomas. So Tomas, uh, you know, blockchain is heavily discussed topic. Uh, companies are looking into it, but what would be your recipe that we increase adoption of the blockchain in the companies? So what would you advise companies uh, uh, to do as a first step uh, to start engaging and implementing the blockchain technologies within their IT processes and operation? Yeah, thanks for the question. I think the, the first thing is with any novel technology is to, you know, get properly educated, um, learn about the what it is, or how it works, what does it bring to your business. Um, you know, if you look at adoption of like a blockchain, what you know, in, in the in the space of logistics, we've seen some movements. You know, there's been we've had trade lands like the big IBM and Maersk joining together doing stuff. Um, but a lot of times we see that it's a, it's kind of more of the same in terms of what we've seen so far already been done. We did like a slap on addition of, you know, it's, and, and this is now um, kind of, it has, it has a blockchain element to it, which is, it, it, it's good in terms of that you're driving digitalization, it's bringing more people on, on board to, to use systems, uh, any systems basically, which is always good uh, because you have a better foundation in terms of what you can, you can get going. But it shows, and at least from, from our experience, what we've heard, um, you know, having these sensors spread out globally, it's, there are challenges to how far you can grow with that type of approach. And at, because it shows the same type of uh, constraints that has been shown before, it's just that it's, it's, you're never going to be able to succeed because it's, uh, you're creating another data silos, but it's just in a different form and you have a different underpinning tech from it. So from our perspective, you're really shifting the paradigm, right? So what we want to do is really look at how can you design something that's decentralized by nature that does not create the vendor lock-in, that does not create yet another aggregator of data, that does not create another um, you know, walled garden within which you everything is perfect and fine, but then as soon as you have to do something outside, because supply chains, by definition, you'll, you'll stumble upon that. Someone's going to have an SAP, someone's going to have an Oracle, someone's going to have something third, fourth, fifth. There's going to be multiple systems that you need to um, tie in together. And there's going to be new concepts, which you don't know yet today. So you cannot design something that's going to rely on a single company if you want to think about how to really leverage the true power of decentralization, what blockchain did. If you want to have something like Bitcoin, where you can send value from one side to the other without having an intermediary in between, you got to think along those lines, right? How can we design something neutral? How can we design something that really hits uh, with a paradigm shift and goes in a, in a different direction. And this is how Origin Trail became, uh, or, or how we saw that the, the world should, has the potential to look like, to leverage these concepts, leverage these type of approaches uh, for the world that uh, you know, we've been working on for, for, for almost a decade now, um, and how we can really transition that so that anything can become, um, Currently, you still have a physical reality, which a lot of times this type of solutions work, and you have a digital reality where you have you know, all the advanced blockchain stuff, like DeFi and 
NFTs and whatnot's happening, but they're very separate. What Origin Trail does, it brings, it builds a bridge of a, of a trusted foundation that allows a, a more clear connections between these things. It allows you to have a unified reality where you can use these new concepts and apply them to, uh, to, to the physical world as well, because you'll have a trusted uh, interplay. Uh, between them and that goes you know why wouldn't we look at uh, using these concepts in, uh, in in more traditional industries and in mainstream in industries that we've been active in we've definitely see a lot of requests and a lot of potential and a lot of adoption for these type of things um, in very old school stuff uh, very corpo very you know um, very, very very kind of what you would consider conservative industry but there's appetite for new things because you can see it either from an individual perspective from your kids individual perspective from whatever from the, from the, from the, you know, just the buzz that is being created that these concepts can be used, can be leveraged, but you need to have that paradigm shift approach. Uh, and that's also, I guess, what I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, finish uh, this rant uh, <laughs> on is that, you know, Origin Trail is very inclusive. It's very it's a decentralized uh, network, but it's also a very decentralized ecosystem uh, with a lot of touch points where different, uh, individuals, organizations, uh, institutions can get involved with. Uh, it definitely allows you to, you know, to take on it and look at it from, it's an open source uh, thing. So you can um, approach it as such and, and see how you can add to it, how you can learn from it, uh, how you can educate as well. Uh, if you are looking from, there's a lot of use cases described from the, you know, even on our website, the, the things that we've been doing uh, that you can look at um, and, and just get familiarized with and you know, start to dabble a little bit in um because it's and, and think of it as a paradigm shift don't think of it you know i'll i'll, I'll slap this on and i'll save three percent then you know it doesn't make sense think of it how can this really change the way we are doing business today and from your perspective and if it does you know get on board if it doesn't it's also fine uh mm -hmm. you'll, you'll find a time and space when this will uh reach a point where it, it maybe does impact your uh, what you're working on but um, anyone that ha kind of finds this exciting and wants to join in uh we're really uh, happy to, to Welcome everyone in. Thank you very much. And every uh, new company joining the blockchain ecosystem will be also the ambassador. We know the word of mouth, uh, the power of the word of mouth. So I think the exponential growth is really on the horizon and momentum will kick in and bringing, you know, the transparency and the trust. But also talking to the transparency, I will now go to Igor. Um, basically, we saw in supply chain basically two major factors in recent year. One is the impact of COVID-19, how it impacted the production and supply chain around the world. But then also we saw, you know, different shortages of materials and chipsets and semiconductors. But also, secondly, we saw the impact of, for example, the blockade of Suez Canal. So. This is on one side. On another side, what we see is that many European countries, including Slovenia, we have these COVID recovery programs boosting the digitalization in the companies. So just for our audience, so Slovenia will have in next year's year for mobility, digitalization of mobility, 552 millions available for innovative approach, research and projects. And this is just the one pro, uh, program. And our Slovenian Digitalization Council also submitted 40 initiatives in April, and the teams are now working so that we will see results very soon from it. But going, Igor, to you, uh, question to you. So uh, digital transformation is happening. Companies around the globe, especially in Europe, they have available funds also coming from the government to boost digitalization available. So how can they engage with your company to bring these solutions faster to the market and to improve the supply chain and bring the IT capacities on higher level so that we are less, uh, re that we are more resilient to future shocks on the market. Daniel, thank you for this question. Uh, I think it's it's important one, uh, especially with the uh, EU and uh, broader uh, global uh, economy supporting the digitalization. So what is happening on the field at this point is that uh, there is a lot of money uh, involved now into this kind of pro projects. And first thing that that's happened on this on the field of digitalization is that uh, implementation. Uh, teams are overbooked. So there is so much money uh, into the play that 
uh, bigger companies are going into the digitalization and they uh, take out a lot of resources and they, those are big projects. For example, for a company like SAP or Infor, uh, I, I've heard the, the information that you wait one to two years to start the process of finding what should be digitalized and then going into the project. So what is the, the key advantage of, of uh, for example, Slovenian companies or more over ZZI is that we are small, agile, and very knowledgeable. So uh, the Slovenian companies uh, have a lot of knowledge, international knowledge, uh, but don't have the shine of big companies that people, you know, take us out and say, okay, you will be our implementation team or whatever. But I think that the time is coming that uh, that uh, that now this will be shown really clearly because you will wait for SAP implementation two three years and the the train will just pass by uh, by and you will stay behind. So now now the the power will be seen with the small agile companies that can do a lot. Uh, with with much less, you know, with much less. And if you have, for example, platform like like blockchain, you can get really really quickly up and running. And also working with SAP, also working with Infor, because the advantage is that we don't change the core systems, but we just take out the the what they want to share or work with, and they transform it into the language of the other party. And th this is the the driver. And on the other hand. Uh, digitalization is not so much about uh, technology, uh, but it's much more about people. You know, the, the, the technology was not a barrier, uh, uh, almost never, because we we have we we've heard all these solutions. We know all all what is offering on on the on the planet, but. Uh, if we don't have the willpower to do it, because we all know that transformation, and like uh, uh, Tomaj also said, uh, if you want to shift the way you are thinking, it's, it's you cannot do it uh, overnight. Uh, you need to you need to really uh, put some uh, uh, effort in it. And also, when when companies decide to work uh, digitally, they would like to do the same as they did on the paper. And you cannot you cannot do that. You must completely change the process. And uh, because today, when you ship something out and something was forgotten, you just write on the paper. You know, uh, take a look at the second pallet; it's down below. But on, on electronic document, you cannot do that. The system will just say invalid and return error. And I think that there are two parts. One is uh, a capability of companies to. Uh, support all the ideas and the other one is that people have the willpower and 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 and, and will to do this and as we've seen a lot of times the, the people uh, companies get enthusiastic and say okay we will digitalize now and then we make first assessment and what everything needs to be changed and it just falls down and uh, so that would be some kind of my uh, my answer to, to that situation Great, great. And I will stay with you uh, with another question, which will go for all panelists, because we are now coming till the end. So I will just ask all of you same questions. And I would kindly ask you, because we are getting short of time uh, with concrete and short answer. So the question is, uh, this, this event is about promoting your work, networking, uh, learning, exchanging ideas. So Igor, what is you personally and your company, you know, looking uh, from such events? So what are your interest areas or how you would like to engage with our audience? In what way? Uh, we are looking for, uh, on one one side, we are looking for partners for uh, spreading the, the blockchain uh, idea uh, widely and connecting the systems. And on the other hand, uh, anybody that needs a uh, highly uh, uh, efficient implementation team for electronic business we are here for you to discuss great so same question goes to tomas so now we'll go just in vice versa sure uh, yeah i think there are plenty of hooks so if you found something of uh, of interest uh, within that uh, origintrail.io so you have a lot of the public channels there if there's something you want to uh, discuss directly either a partnership or something that that kind of uh, spark your interest you can also reach out to me directly on, on linkedin or twitter happy to happy to chat great so luca the question for you what you and your company are looking for so some of the uh, some of the 
part of the question I've already answered before, but uh, we are also looking um, so what we can offer um, AI and machine learning ex expertise if um, anyone uh, is needs it to to uh, with this this kind of things to bring the product to market. And we are also looking for partners. For example, I'll contact Lead Transit because we have some solutions for buses and also a lot of data of the buses in Slovenia. Uh, we are working with LPP and Karish, uh, for example. Um, and we can also offer algorithms for uh, bus prediction arrival if you don't have it yet. Um, and as mentioned before, we are also looking for partners in um, other um, domains like uh, smart vehicles or self-driving vehicles and um, smart houses. Great, thank you, Luca. So you. Uh, with Ursha, uh, Ursha, you can you know talk also offline about the possibilities. So Rok, uh, Monolith and Slovenia. So what are yes. the in areas interest of uh, you're yeah. looking? Yeah, in the, in the first part, like say Igor before, and you see on his slide, uh, we are looking for partner. Uh, so uh, we are looking for partner in logistic uh, uh, because we think that we have one of the product which, which can be integrated or it's a part of a big story. Uh, and I think that in Slovenia and worldwide we have quite a big story like post like I don't know big big shopping centers and like this which they need uh, big logistic. Uh, on the other side, uh, we are. Um, we know that we are very good in our data, so uh, uh, I don't know if you know Monolith because Monolith is working on navigation map till uh, 20 years, so uh, on each uh, navigation uh, data you drive in Slovenia, you have Monolith data you know, on Google, on Apple, on I don't know here, Garmin, every, everywhere. Uh, now we are working uh, already on dynamical uh, data. This is uh, traffic information data. You see on DARS, uh, this is the colors on the Google. So uh, on the other side, we are looking, and on the end, we are looking customers for our products, which is uh, which come from all this data. So Fleetopt is one of this project. And I think that every company which have one to 1,000 cars, they need some optimization of uh, delivery, some optimization of uh, uh, estimated time, time, some optimization of people, of uh, vehicle, and so on. So we are open for all. <laughs> Great, happy to hear that. So Ursha, you're also, you know, uh, from the company which is very international. So what areas are you looking into? partnering, investment, market expansions. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Obviously, there will be plenty of opportunities after this event. Um, so um, the, mo the main focus for us uh, at the moment would be uh, to expand our partnership network. Um, so we are looking for partners that share the same vision as we have. So to reimagine public transport and mobility. Um, mostly those are companies that have complementary products to ours, companies that are present on smart city projects uh, or are entering the smart uh, city landscape. Great, thank you for your answer. And Blush, similar question to you. Mm, yes, um, what we're looking for are partners for OVM and ODM business model. It means we do not uh, promote our own company in general market, but uh, we're trying to find partners uh, who does this and uh, maybe already have a sales net or have an idea why what they would like to produce in um, our capacity or we can uh, also uh, bring the know-how to any other production elsewhere. Uh, so the partners could also have an idea how to start with promotion this, of this kind of products. But of course, in this case, they need uh, quite a lot of capital to do this. Yes, it's capital intensive, you know, to bring products to the market. So David, I think you are in similar position, you know, it's again, it's about, you know, uh, dealership networks, manufacturing capacity. So what your company is looking for? And you're on mute, David. 
Yeah, it's fine. We are open to 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 um, any uh, any partnership. Uh, we are looking for for new uh, to um, scale up the production to scale uh, than uh, marketing global marketing because we are know that we are when we push this flyway to the to the global market we are we are we are too small we we cannot handle it and it's good that we are preparing for right now for this uh, grant opening so we are we are open to to any partnership that can help uh, us to uh, push flyway to the global market okay thank you david and thank you to all panelists for your contribution your insights sharing your amazing and very successful stories. So I'm pretty sure that uh, we will hear more in near future. So I would like really to thank you. And I would also like to thank our audience for participation and questions. And I would just like to mention three things. So this event was organized by the Spirit Slovenian Development Agency, who is also leading Slovenian Pavilion at Expo. So if you are in Dubai, please do not hesitate, just stop by, say hello, and we can meet in person and share with you uh, some more amazing stories from Slovenia and so on. Second thing is, in, if you're in Slovenia, Ljubljana, we have the basically the digitalization, digital innovation showroom in Ljubljana in the BTC, where we have weekly topics. And again, it's managed by Spirit, our Ministry of Economics, DIG, BTC, and other partners. And the third thing is, and this is my personal wish, is that we will win this pandemic as soon as possible so that we can all meet in person. I like digital, but I like more face-to-face -face meetings. So I'm really looking forward to meet you very soon in person so that we share even more amazing stories. So with that, I would like to conclude today's event. I wish you a lovely day and talk to you soon and see you soon, as soon as possible. Thank you and goodbye.